Yeah, I didn't think I'd be here. I didn't think I'd be here either. So hey guys, Northern Crusade here with Weather Warplanes. Uh, yeah. I can tell you now, this is actually my first flight. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, I say first flight. It's like the second tier plane. So it's like my second flight or something. Like that. But yeah, I decided to get into it. Um, Red pointed out that the tier ten British fighter is called the Swift. Uh, my nickname is Swift, so <laughs> yeah, I kind of had to. But yeah, I, I'm kind of doing a quest to get the Swift. And that's going to be a long time playing this. I'm only up to tier 5 of the Spitfire now, but... Here we have the Bristol bu the Bristol Bulldog. Now, Bristol Bulldog is the Type 105. And as you can see, I haven't learned a lot already, because I don't even break with grammar terms. But the Type 105, it's a single-seat biplane that was built in 1920s. Somewhere around 1929, they brought in, so, yeah. It never actually saw combat under the Royal Air Force, even though we have a crisis in Ethiopia. Sorry, that. Oh, but Abyssinia, sorry. I'm getting it wrong. Ah, to be British locations. We got 443 of these things, and the only one that actually actively threw them in combat, of all nations we exported it to, is Spain, and that was during the, the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. Oh, we also, so the finish also got some, but then yeah, 10 of these saw sort of combat as part of the Finnish Air Force. Along with 11 going to the Spanish Republican Air Force. So, you know, they did so well. <laughs> but yeah, they, they're they old. They're really, really old. Even by the standards of the game. But this is, what, the Golden Age era, era aeronautic, uh, aeronautics? Aeronautic combat? And I can like to think I learnt a few things from War Thunder, but as you can probably tell, no. <laughs> Just no. But this plane is... Yeah. The one thing I'll give it is that you actually get one of the aces. Uh, one of the aces in World War II actually flew this in the early 1920s. Rather, a ace known as Douglas Bader. Who, otherwise, Sir Douglas Bader. Actually, he, um was showing off in 1931 and he actually crashed and cr lost both his legs in the crash. He lived, he recovered, but yeah, they, they didn't let him back in until World War II happened. Then we yeah, got ready to join the RAF once more. So the biggest thing about this is it's a turn fighter. It's a biplane. You can turn faster in this. You've got decent guns in it. I. I actually kind of like this plane in this game, even though, you know, tier 2, there's not going to be a lot of difference. Uh, to be fair, I actually didn't think I'd be playing World of Warplanes. Uh, there's a lot of games that have been coming out, and I'm already dividing my time between World of, War play, uh, World of Tanks and World of Warships. So, yeah. But, admittedly, I'm enjoying this more than War, than War Thunder. And I don't know why, it's probably just because you don't die so easily. If that makes any sense, like, I'm not going to get pilot sniped every five minutes. I can actually do something, even in, like, bottom tier stuff. Uh, remember that happening. But, even then, you know, it, it still feels... I don't know, if it, it, I've heard it's better than it was before. I don't know if it is. But I'm actually enjoying myself. And I don't think I'm that bad, despite what the gameplay shows. Um, regardless, how this is conquest mode. I like to call it superiority mode, but, you know. The idea is basically you got to take out each zone and capture it for your side. You get points, you get influence points for holding them. And some of them have different effects, like getting the forward airstream, which is the plane, you actually use that as like a forward one point. If you take garrison, it's just points. If you take, there's others like army bases, mining complexes, command centers, that kind of thing. This actually feels kind of more arcadey than War Thunder. I know War Thunder is meant to be like realism, but that's neither here nor there right now. And one thing I don't like, I know it's more, it has to be that way, I just don't like how it shows smoke whenever you take some kind of damage. I know it's meant to be like a feature and it's meant to help other pilots distinguish what's been damaged on you, to make it easier to recognise these things, but Consistently, this is my first shot down by an AA gun of all things. Damn, Akak. 
But uh, I know it's meant to be like some kind of semi-realism, but I don't remember hearing anything about when you have a hole in your wing, you have smoke coming out of it. Unless there's a fire there, and if there's a fire there, something else has gone wrong. And I don't want to be the one to explain that one. The guns in this don't feel that strong. Then again, tier 2. But then even for tier 2, they don't feel that strong. I don't know what to say, really. It's just... Uh, I'll admit, I'm only in this with a Swift. But... Yeah, I, I, I kind of like it. it. It's decent. We got... Well, just for more historical facts for you. We got 443 of these built, including prototypes and license built. And we have... One, two, four, five, six... About eight different types of them. Including one that we got license built by Japan. And most of these were pretty much just... Getting, up, getting upgraded. The Japanese one was called the J JSSF. The Japanese Single Seat Fighter. It was built by Nakajima. The uh, aircraft works. Uh, I don't really know what to say, really. Like, it's an, I don't script these, and I think it, you know, for early flights, it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, here's something interesting for you. Nakajima, you might know for a lot of their planes. For example, the A1N, the E... Uh, let's go for the 1930s. They built the C3N, the LBT, the KI-19, which is a heavy bomber, KI-27, which is a fighter. They built most of the KIs, the KI series, which you might know, you might not. It really depends on how you go. Oh, that's actually something else like this. In the first part of the game, you actually are, have unlimited respawns until the squall comes in. And then it's one life, that's it. If you die during that, that's game over. You can't come back. Now, it's kind of neat, because it makes you say you got the first friends in part of the combat, and then when it comes around to the last bit, it's like, nope, you gotta make it count now. So, it's kind of entertaining, in that you can kind of get the fast and frantic combat, and then you've got the other roles. Now, I'm not a ground attack player, and I don't know why I'm doing that either. <laughs> In fact, I don't think I've got bombs in this thing, so... Really, I should be leaving that to other planes, but I haven't got any bombs. I don't think anyone here has any bombs. It's just, you know, me trying to be pedantic at this point. Just try to get more points I can. And I am very determined to shoot this guy. I don't think I got the kill at that, so... But, you can tell, this match is a wash. We've, we've lost, but I'm just going down fighting. Don't give up until the bell sounds. I'm lucky I can actually get some decent shots out of it. I do like this the pilot view, by the way. It actually doesn't get in the way. It doesn't move with you. Yeah, it doesn't flip with you. It actually just keeps focused on level stance. Um, there's the game. Now, I came first in the wing. And I got 5,000 power points. Why not? That's not bad. For an early flight, that's not bad. But from that... I got a good deal of experience. About uh, 200, 700? I can't, it's a small screen. <laughs> really feel like a dunce in a real life. 799 experience and about 30,000. The second of the wing, apparently. Don't know why, but. Eh, I did better than the good deal of their team. I beat, like, all but three members of their team. I can live with that. I did my best. There's always so much you can do. So. Let's move into another game. This is the Bristol 133. It's a tier 3 plane, I believe? It's either tier 3 or tier 4, I forget, off the top of my head. There was only one of these built, and it was a prototype of sorts, say, part of the competition. It comes with four guns. I can't remember how early on this is, I think it's relatively early. But I'm trying it out and seeing how it goes. It's not a bad plane, I actually really like this one. Now, this plane has a bit of a story. Now, the Air Ministry made specifications for something called F7-30, or slash 30 rather. It was to get a four-gun fighter with a better high-performance altitude, as that high altitude performance, sorry, and endurance than current generation fighters, along with a good climb rate, maneuverability, and all-around vision combined with a low landing speed. 
They were trying to get a lot of it. A preference was expressed for the Rolls Royce Gossip, Goss Hawk engine, sorry, which was apparently an experimental evaporated, evaporatively cooled engine. I don't know exactly what that means. But Bristol did, had sent in three design submissions, and none of them got chosen. But the Goss again, this is the Bristol 1 2 3 got picked as a private venture contender. Bristol was working on a second design to be powered by their own Mercury engine, and that is actually what you get mounted in this plane. The 133 is one of the first aircraft intended to serve the RAF with a retractable undercarriage. It was also the first Bristol aircraft to use stressed skin construction for the wings, so basically it's all pulled tight. And it was using the Alcad sheets, which are basically, you know, wing covers. So. It's very good. It's the guns are really good for the era. I mean, it's four of them. I'm taking a lot of fire here. It's four of them, but it's lots of fire. They're, they're like, I think it's 303s. I can't remember exactly. But you can see, I'm just tearing the enemy apart whenever they come at me. That's the strength of this plane. Just turn, fire, and let your guns do the talking. You can't do the damage, but you can do the damage over time very quickly. And this guy's just rolling to try and get out of the way. We learned from Star Wars that doesn't help. Another way is about this plane, I just freaking love it. There we go, I think I took his engine out at the same time. So, this plane actually first flew, and it actually did get some recognition. It was piloted under the experimental marking R10 on the 8th of June 1934, piloted by Cyril Unwins, who loved the plane. Testing of the eight, eight, next eight months made some modifications, like a sliding canopy, a crash pile on bare brakes, that kind of thing. And they improved a lot about it. Now, the plane was almost ready. And tests were about to take place at RAF Martel's... Okay, I'm sorry, Martel's Hab Heath. And I really wish I'd learned these. When WT Campbell entered the spin with the undercarriage. Unintentionally down. And it, it couldn't get out of the spin. And he had to abandon the plane. This basically destroyed it. This ended the Bristol's interest in the specific competition. And we eventually got the Gloucester Gladiator, which you'll know from War Thunder. Which is one of the planes that guarded Malta. So, we basically got... In where Wolf, Wolfender would take the Gladiator, this takes the ball, the Bristol. I kind of prefer this to the, to the Gladiator. I read out... Fucking rammers. Yeah, you'll see that a lot. I get rammed a lot on this. Um, I kind of prefer this to the Gladiator. And it's mostly just because I can actually move in this thing. Yeah, I know it's not it's not intended as like a speedy fighter. It's intended as a turn fighter with a decent st uh, stability to it. Do I think the Gladiator better than this? Hell no. I think that the Gladiator is good in its own way. I don't think it's better than this. I think the the Gladiator is slower, is better at turn fighting than this is. I do think this is going to last longer in a fight though, as long as things don't go wrong. Having said that, I kind of prefer how they done it here in Star War Thunder because here it's well. Look how those guns are tearing it apart. I'd be here forever in War Thunder trying to get this done because the guns in War Thunder aren't good. Like you could be shooting forever and get nowhere because it just hit it hit 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 here just damage over time. I don't care if you don't get crits or not. And I'm actually near the top of my team at this point. It's kind of... Because <laughs> I, I love this. Can I take a break? Because I'm at the top of my team. And I'm just like... Okay, I'm carrying this team. And I have to make a mistake here. I actually Now I, look, I can actually see the two guys on radar. Here we go. I should have turned quicker. Because you do get something for the venerings. And I really start fighting at higher altitudes. Or fl casually flying at higher altitudes. Because it's, yeah, I'm starting to go lower and I need to get higher whenever I get into fights. Because most of the time they'll, they'll do this and drag you down. It's something that actually came from War Thunder. And it's really annoying trying to get back up to them. It's like, okay, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's, a, he's over there somewhere. There. And they're so higher than me. And this plane does not climb well. It's, it's even something I'm finding in my Spitfire. They do not climb well. I don't know what happened there. I think he got a tail gunner. Or the AA helped. 
something I like about this mode, as opposed to something like World of Tanks, if you take out enemy fighters in the airspace, or enemy fighters in general that are capturing, you actually do get more points than taking out the neutrals, which I'd like a ton, because it really does motivate you to go after the enemy planes, as opposed to going for the neutral ones and just hoping to kick them down that way. I'm kind of in favour of this plane a lot. I, I've actually hit, like, I'm currently trying to go America, uh, Germans, Japanese, and British, which is a great combination, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's, I just got told that I, everything I play, I always go for British first. No, I don't go for British first. I went for this because of the Swift, specifically. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to end up with more German plans. Completely forgot about that. Okay, this is one of the things that hate that hates me. This thing, I get killed by biplanes more than anything else. It's like, come on, Swift, you can do better than this. You can see, I can actually think I made a mistake here and spawned back at the spawn base, but oh no. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's not bad. I think I do my I do my fair share of work. Now the scores in, I can actually start making these things count, and I think I overshoot here. I don't use my brakes. Because I don't know how to brake at this point. Like I seriously don't know how to brake at this point. I'm literally just like, yeah, I'll do it worth speed. I know it's a boost. <laughs> and it's still a majority biplanes, so I've still got a majority advantage against them. Because biplanes are easier to crit, uh, crit against. And that's a. That's a fuck all, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's nice to hate you. Whatever. Tired. <laughs> this is what I'm wrong with it. It's a small screen for watching, so. Grade 2 fire. If I get, like, one more grade, I get Hero of the Sky and Ram. Remember how I hate ramming? Yeah. Okay, guys, want to draw? <laughs> nah, but just that was fun. Top of my wing. I think I can say for sure I did a good job there. We lost, but it's kind of annoying because my first few games have been losses, and I have got some victories on my belt. I've actually got quite a few, but it, it's either like I have got a hero of the skies. As a in a German plane, and I was carrying my team the whole time. Uh, like I got a million and one medals from one of them, but yeah, that's worth a lot. If I'd gotten a bit more, I could have done better. But yeah, you can't save more. So, what do I think about World of Warplane so far? I think it's more arcadey than War than War Thunder. I do prefer how they do the damage models here. It's not about getting as many crits on them and hoping to take out the pilot. It's all about putting damage on. You can win a fight very effectively. Even if you are outmatched by just playing to your strengths and knowing the enemy's weakness. Look at the, look at the difference, by the way. I got I think I got, like, just below their ace. So, I can live with that. But, yeah. That's been the World of the Warplanes. What can I say about it so far? It's a lot of fun if you like going through... Planes. If you like War Thunder, you'll like this. Um, if you want more arcadey War Thunder, one where you don't get killed in one shot or you don't get crew things or that kind of thing, you will enjoy us more than you'll enjoy War Thunder. I do think this game needs a bit of work. Um, it's getting there. It's getting to a point where it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, I think it's just starting out. But yeah, I've been Northern Crusader and I hope to see you next time for more in the skies. Check your six, boys. I'll see you next time in World of Warplanes.